Good news, the Tire Reviews YouTube channel isn't dead. Oh, good news for me, I guess. The start of the year is always a difficult time for relevant uploading. I've been off filming a lot of winter content, which obviously I can't put out till September, October, but this marks the start of a very exciting year for tire reviews on YouTube. We've got the launch of the Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sport range, which I'm gonna give away a set with in this video, so keep watching. I've bought another M3 to turn into a track car, and as I'm turning it into a track car, I'm gonna document every performance modification I do to it, test it thoroughly as I would a tire test, and then film the results. So that should give you an idea of things like putting a wing on, an aero, and weight reduction, and power and suspension exactly what that can do for your car's speed and performance and as a rule we've just got lots of general geeky tire stuff coming up so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as with last year for the best tires of 2019 i'm going to segment this video into two parts first up we're going to be looking at the uhp stuff which is like this designed for 18 inch and above and has its blend of characteristics towards sporty handling and feel rather than outright comfort and economy. The second part of this video, we'll look at the outright comfort economy section, the section we call touring tires. These are generally 13 to 22 inches and fit a wide range of vehicles, but they have their emphasis on comfort and tread life and low noise. Also, in addition to this top summer tire video, I'm gonna be doing the all season and winter as I did last year, but I'm gonna add in an SUV and 4x4 video and a mid-range and budget video. So if you're looking at saving a little bit of money on tires while still getting the best performance you can for your money, that's the video you're gonna be interested in. Hopefully that'll be in around a month. So onto the tires. The exciting news for 2019 is Goodyear are taking the fight directly to Michelin while kind of borrowing from their name catalogue. The new Goodyear Eagle F1 Asymmetric 5 and Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sport range match the Michelin Pilot Sport range tire for tires, blow for blow. So it's gonna be really interesting. You've got the Asymmetric 5 versus the Pilot Sport 4 and the Pilot Sport 4S versus the Eagle F1 Super Sport and then the Pilot Sport Cup 2 versus the Eagle F1 Super Sport R and then the Eagle F1 Super Sport RS versus the Cup 2R. Whew, that's a lot of testing to do this year, but it'll be great fun. So for the new Conti Michelin Goodyear battle, where do the tires sit? Well, at the base layer of the ultra high performance segment, you have these, the Continental Premium Contact 6, the Goodyear Eagle F1A Symmetric 5, and the Michelin Pilot Sport 4. All these are in 16 inch and above, and they've got a little bit more comfort bias compared to their bigger brothers. As mentioned at the start of the video, I'll be testing the Asymmetric 5 against the Asymmetric 3 and the Premium Contact 6. I'm filming it next week, so it should be out in a couple of weeks by the time I've got to edit. Yay, more than one video a month. Now, a lot of people ask me about sidewall stiffness of these tires because they think it's a good indicator of handling. And while it is an indicator of handling, it's only one of many variables, but I'm gonna answer the question anyway. You've got the Premium, the Goodyear, and the Michelin. See, I would say they're all roughly, I'd say maybe the Continental's got the strongest sidewall and the Goodyear and Michelin are very, very similar. So if you think about that as an indicator of handling, which it kind of is, kind of isn't, there's your answer. No one's probably answered that before. Next up in the performance range is these three. It's the Continental Sport Contact 6, the Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sport, and the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. These build on their smaller brothers by having slightly stiffer construction, slightly more rubber on the road to maybe not have quite as much comfort or quite as low noise, but they definitely have a more sporty handling and probably a little bit higher levels of grip when going around a circuit or a fast road drive. So these are normally found in 18, maybe 19 inch and above, and they're designed for the very best cars that spend their life on the road. Back to the shoulder stiffness test. Well, I can tell you that the Contis is solid. The Goodyear's is solid and the Michelin's solid. Probably the Michelin's the least solid of the three, but they've all got a nice strong sidewall, which should translate into sporty handling if the rest of the tire is working with that part of the construction. As time of filming, no one's done the test between all these three. In fact, no one's tested the Super Sport at all, but I will be in June using a BMW M2 and 265-3519 and 245-3519. So subscribe for that. I might be the first, I'm not so sure. I might be, might not be. It's over in June, but I'm so excited to get on track with this new Eagle F1 Super Sport and this, the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, which as everyone thinks of now is the best ultra high performance tire on the market. Let's not forget the Continental though. It's an excellent UHB summer tire and in some tests, it comes out as the most sporty handling. That will be in my test later this year. I'm really excited to get on this tire as well and actually compare it to these three. Next up in the range again are these two absolute units of tires. It's the Goodyear Eagle F1 Super Sport R and everyone's favorite track tire, the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2. 
This is where Continental stops being an option, sadly, because while they had the Continental Force contact a few years ago, that's now been discontinued. So they just don't have an equivalent track day tire this. As the previous step up, these take away even more tread and put more rubber in contact with the ground and again, have a very sturdy, stiff construction, which lends it to the ultimate outright handling in the dry. These tires are both gonna be the top of the tiers where it comes to tires you can use on track, but can still get away with on the road. As for the shoulder stiffness test, I keep on telling you isn't relevant, but talking about it anyway. Well, Michelin might have the slight edge on this one, just a slightly stiffer construction on the sidewall here, but they're both gonna be absolutely insane tires to drive on. Whether these two will be tested against each other this year, I'm not so sure. I'm trying my very hardest to do so, and maybe that's a job for the new M3 and bolt on a set of really big wheels to it. But just keep an eye out, keep coming back to tirereviews.com for all the latest information of these two tires, because I'm trying my hardest, and I'm going on the launch for this at the end of the month, so I'll at least get some time on it. And finally, at the very top, the godlike level of tires, you have this, the Goodyear Eagle F1 Supersport RS, and it's invisible counterpart, sadly Michelin couldn't get me the tire, which is the new Cup 2R, the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2R. Both these are the insanest, look at this tread pattern, there's nothing to it. The top of the top dry handling tires. This is a 325-30-21, which is a GT2 RS rear fitment. The same with the Cup 2, they're very specific on marks and they're both OE approved. So I'm not sure I'm gonna get a chance to test these this year. If anyone has a GT2 RS, GT3 RS, 488 or 458, they really fancy lending me, I'd love you forever. Just, just drop a comment below and uh, I'll come and do whatever it takes. Maybe not, probably anything for a set of these. So fingers crossed that happens. So of these new tires, who's been tested in 2019? Well, it's only the Asymmetric 5, the Pilot Sport 4, and the Premium Contact 6 that have been tested together. And they're all so close in performance, it doesn't really matter which one you buy. Uh, the Goodyear in the 18 inch fitment is about 81 pound. So is the Continental. The Michelin a little bit more expensive, about 89, 90 pound in 18 inch fitment. So of the three tires, head over to tire reviews to look at all the latest data that might have come out after the filming this video and user reviews and my own thoughts. And that will help you decide exactly which of the three tires would be best for you. As for the Super Sport versus Pilot Sport 4 versus Sport Contact 6, well, that's probably gonna happen before I do it in June, but subscribe to the channel and keep an eye on the Tire Reviews website to see what happens in June. They're priced approximately like the smaller sizes. The Michelin's the most expensive of the three and the Conti and Goodyear are on a similar level. But remember, you always tend to get a bit more tread life out of a Michelin tire, which balances out that extra purchase price. So I guess it's down to the test data, which I can't wait to do. So the next three tires, they're not mid-range, they're not quite premium, they're sitting in this kind of void where their quality is almost premium-like, but you can get them for a little bit less money. First up is the new Hankook Ventus S1 Evo 3. As always with the new Hankook stuff, it looks to have an excellent all-round balanced performance, and in a recent test, it's been praised for its sporty handling and excellent braking. So Hankook are very quickly becoming a premium manufacturer, and it's now down to when, not if, someone actually labels them premium. As their quality's improved, so has their price. It's crept up a little bit, but in a 19-inch fitment, the Hankook S1 Evo 3 can still be had at about 20 pounds cheaper than the rival Michelin, or about 10 or less than the Goodyear. So it will save you a chunk of money if you're replacing all four tires. Now this, this is the new Nokian Powerproof. This tire looks to have excellent dry and wet braking performances, which is a key safety quality and maybe retaining a little bit more comfort. So if you're looking for a very safe tire that's giving you low noise and good comfort, this might be a good option. In the UK, expect to pay around 109 pound in a 19 inch fitment, which again, is a little bit cheaper than the Hankook and a chunk cheaper than the top three premium. So definitely want to have a look at, especially if you're in Europe where this might be a little bit more competitively priced. And finally, as mentioned in last year's video, the Falcon Azensis FK510 is still an excellent tire. It still looks like it's got excellent dry and wet grip, reasonable handing and good levels of comfort. And at 96 pound in the equivalent 19 inch fitment, it's really good value as well. So keep an eye out for that tire if you don't wanna spend as much money perhaps. So onto the more comfort oriented section of the video. Now don't rule out the Continental Premium Contact 6 the Michelin Pilot Sport 4 and the Goodyear Eagle F1 Asymmetric 5 if they're available in your size because these are excellent tires and they've got that comfort bias for a sports tire. But the next few tires are gonna have the smaller size ranges and even more of an emphasis placed on low rolling resistance, good levels of comfort and low noise. Starting off, we've got this, which is the new Michelin Primacy 4. The Primacy 4 looks to offer excellent low noise, good levels of comfort, and as with all Michelin tires, excellent wear. Sadly, this does come at a price and in 205, 55, 16, you're looking at about 61 a tire, which 
is the most expensive tyre that isn't another Michelin, but more on that in a bit. This, this is the Continental Eco Contact 6, which has just come out. Sadly, no one's actually tested it yet, but if you follow on from the other Continental Eco Contact lines, it's gonna be a tire that offers excellent comfort, a very, very low rolling resistance, but it normally sacrifices quite a bit of handling. And I know that I said the sidewall stiffness test isn't the be all and end all of handling, but if you look at this, this is how they get low rolling resistance. They take weight and material out of the sidewall, which gives it a nice comfortable ride, but it does mean the tire does squidge around if you're handling. So this is definitely one for the fuel savers. Expect to pay around 56 pound a tire for this, as opposed to 64 for the Michelin. So a little bit cheaper for the Conti. Like at the start of the video, the final three tires I'm gonna recommend aren't quite mid range, aren't quite premium. They'll save you a little bit of money over the previous tires I've mentioned. First up, you've got this, which is the new Nokian wet proof. Nokian like making a tire that's very good in wet handling. It's kind of their thing. So this is gonna be a tire with excellent safety qualities. For the Nokian, expect to pay around 53 pound for a 16 inch tire. So that five, six pound cheaper again. The final two tires are two tires I recommended last year. Again, it's the Hankook Ventus Prime 3 and the Falcon Zeus ZE310. Both those tires have a very well balanced performance of low rolling resistance, low noise, good fuel use, and good wet and dry braking. With them both significantly cheaper again at around 43 pound a tire, which is quite a bargain for that level of performance. Definitely want to think of, again, in the smaller sizes. And lastly, sneaking in from the all season tire video is this, the Michelin Cross Climate. Now Michelin do call this a summer tire that has winter capabilities. I call it an all season tire because it's a tire that can be used in all season, but it's definitely the only all season tire on the market that can be used in summer without a penalty and dry braking. And remember, when compared to the other tires I've mentioned, this is the only one that's gonna have any sort of capabilities in snow and ice. And they're very, very good capabilities. Sadly, as I hinted at earlier with the Primacy 4, this is the most expensive tire, around £70 a tire, so almost twice the price of the Falcon. But as with other Michelin products, the extra tread life offsets some of that. The only tire you can use in stone ice, and if you want to fit one tire year round on a smaller wheel and a smaller car, this is definitely a tire to consider. And that's it. Congratulations. If you've got this far, you're obviously a tire geek, which I like. Or you remember me saying at the start of the video I was giving away one of these tires, so you're probably here for that information. Well, hopefully you're a tire geek too, because to win, all you have to do is subscribe and leave a nice comment. Well, it doesn't even have to be nice, but I've had it up to here with tight t-shirt comments. So if you want to insult me, tell me my beard's awful or something. The winner will be picked at random in a few months, but the winner has to do something for me. The winner has to write a review of the tire. So they'll get four tires for their car in the size they want, but they have to give me some words for the tire reviews website. So millions of people that browse that every year will be able to see their information and see like a real world review of them, not from an expert like me, but from just a dr everyday driver. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Any questions, please ask in the comments below. I do my very best to answer every single one. Uh, for further information and technical data, head over to tirereviews.com. It's my website. It goes alongside the YouTube channel and has millions and millions of data points on there and it's really geeky and lovely. So if you are a tire geek and you've got this far because you're a tire geek, A, I really like you and B, check out the website. Leave the reviews of your own tires to help the millions of people that browse it pick their next tires also. Brilliant. And as always, I seem to wedge this into the end of every video, even though it doesn't flow whatsoever. Happy safe motoring. Oh, it's going. Oh, it didn't, fair play. Right, that's it, oh. Oh, well, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful.